Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we'll talk about cardiac pharmacology, statins with a mnemonic baby, so let's get started. On my beautiful channel, I have a playlist called Cardiac Pharmacology, and we have discussed these topics before. Please watch Pimpidoic Acid before watching this video, because Pimpidoic Acid blocks the step that comes before statin. LDL cholesterol equals total cholesterol minus HDL minus triglycerides over 5. Why is What is LDL? Low density lipoprotein, that's the bad cholesterol. HDL is high density lipoprotein, that's the good cholesterol. Okay, I don't like the equation in this sense. I would like to modify it. So let's put the total cholesterol here. Total cholesterol equals LDL plus HDL plus triglycerides over 5 and that's what we mean by total cholesterol LDL which is the bad cholesterol plus the good cholesterol plus triglycerides over 5 why is the bad cholesterol bad because it can lead to oxidation fatty streak formation atherosclerosis baby angina myocardial infarction TIA and stroke by the way angina in your heart is equivalent to TIA in your brain this is just ischemia but the infarction in your heart is called myocardial infarction the infarction in your brain is called a stroke also it can lead to pvd peripheral vascular disease it's red white and blue cholesterol gold stones these are yellow gold stones not to be confused with the pigmented gold stones of bilirubin that you see them in hemolysis this is xanthelasma this is tendon xanthoma and you can also get retinal lipid deposits, not to be confused with your Bank of America deposits. This offer expires in two days. Cardiofarm 50 gives you a 50% discount to my cardiac pharmacology course. It has 50 videos. What are the different types of cholesterol? LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol. VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, that's also bad. HDL, high density lipoprotein, that's good. IDL is intermediate density, dietary cholesterol that you eat in your double cheeseburger, and total cholesterol, total cholesterol equals HDL, the good one, plus LDL, the bad one, plus triglycerides, they are bad, over five. Hey, my patient, your lipids are high, so what should I do, doctor? You should decrease your LDL cholesterol, we should decrease your triglyceride. How do we do them? First, we go with lifestyle modification, including decreased fat intake, increased exercise, and decrease your weight. When the bleep hits the fan, we go to medications. Okay, doctor, so when it comes to my lifestyle modification, give me, like, be specific. What are your dietary recommendations? Okay, low-fat diet. What do you mean? I mean total fat intake should be less than 30% of your daily caloric intake. The saturated fat should be less than 7% of your calories. Cholesterol should be less than 200 milligrams per day. Does this stuff work? In some patients, diets may lower LDL by 25 to 30%, which is freaking awesome. Now let's talk about statins, but before we talk about statins, you know that diet has three things. When you go to McDonald's, you have the bread, which is the bun, that's carbohydrate. Then the cheese, that's the freaking fat. And then the meat, which is protein. Whether you eat carbohydrate, proteins, or fat, they end up in your small intestine. We break them down into small parts. Fat starts as triglycerides, broken down into glycerol and free fatty acids. Usually not glycerol per se, it's actually monoglycerides, diglycerides, etc. Here is a case for you. A new patient has a cholesterol of 253 milliequivalent per liter, HDL 37, LDL 198, triglycerides 245. Which of the following should you start with? Fibrates, niacin, cholestyramine, ezetimibe, or statin? Please pause. Now let me answer this for you. Let's dissect that. Cholesterol 253, normal high or low, this is high. Normally it's 200. HDL, the good cholesterol, 37, this is bad. This is, I did not say male or female, let's say male. We would love your HDL to be more than 50, more than 60. The higher, the better. 37 is too low, man. LDL, the bad cholesterol, 198, this is freaking high. It should be 100 or less. Triglycerides, 245, too high. It should be 150 or less. So this patient has hyperlipidemia. There is no question. What should you start with? You always start with statins, baby. 
What are the lipid lowering agents? Statins, fibrates, cholestyramine, niacin, ezetimai, PCSK9 inhibitors, very potent yet very expensive. Bempidoic acid, which was literally approved by the FDA this year in 2020. We are up to date without reading up to date. So here is the deal. You go to McDonald's and order the double cheeseburger, which is absolutely delicious but contains lots of fat. Speaking of fat, this is the dietary glucose and dietary cholesterol and fat. Dietary cholesterol is going to be absorbed from your intestine. And then it goes to, you know, the portal circulation and then it ends up in the liver. This is your dietary cholesterol. And then you have citrate here. Where did you get citrate from? Remember, like the TCA cycle, citrate is everywhere, baby. And then acetyl-CoA. Great. What's the enzyme here? It's called ACL, not your anterior cruciate ligament. And then you have acetyl-CoA. And then you have HMG-CoA. So what's the name of the enzyme here? HMG-CoA synthase. Great. From HMG-CoA to mevalonic acid by HMG-CoA reductase. Cool. After that, mevalonate will give you cholesterol esters. These are cholesterol in the liver, not to be confused with your dietary cholesterol. These are not the same. And then you combine the cholesterol with the triglycerides forming VLDL. VLDL is going to leave the liver and jump onto the bloodstream. VLDL is very low density lipoprotein, hashtag bad. And then by LPL, lipoprotein lipase, it's going to become intermediate density lipoprotein. But before the step, you can store some of the fat in your adipose tissue as well as some muscles. Then we have intermediate density lipoprotein, and then it becomes low density lipoprotein. This is ugly. We try to distribute this as much as we can because if we leave it in the vessel, it's gonna be oxidized, called oxidized LDL, forming atherosclerotic plaques, and that's how you die, man. So distribute the LDL, get, kick it away. We give it to the liver, we give it to all tissue, we give it to other stuff. This is called LDL receptor mediated uptake. These cells and the hepatocytes as well are trying to uptake the LDL. If you remember my previous video in biochemistry playlist, it's called vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid. We have talked about the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle has citrate. Yeah, in fact, it has citrate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl-CoA. And then by ATP citrate lyase, this is the ACL. So it's not your anterior cruciate ligament, it's actually the ATP citrate lyase converts citrate into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA has many options. We love this acetyl-CoA, man. This is how we get acetyl-choline, by the way. We just love it. This is how we acetyl, called acetylation of other compounds. It's just doozy. By HMG-CoA synthase, it gives us HMG-CoA. And by HMG-CoA reductase, it gives us mevalonic acid and mevalonate. And then this is cholesterol in the liver. This is the pathway of cholesterol synthesis. We have another pathway to form malonyl-CoA. This is fatty acid synthesis. If you remember my previous lecture on vitamin B5 or pantothenic acid, I've told you that acetyl-CoA will combine with malonyl-CoA to elongate the fatty acid chains in the fatty acid synthesis pathway. This was stimulated by Mr. Insulin and inhibited by Mr. Glucagon. Glucagon. My handwriting sucks. So here is the citrate from the mitochondria, baby, into acetyl-CoA. By HMG-CoA synthase, we have HMG-CoA. By HMG-CoA reductase, we have mevalonic acid, and then whatever, scalene. And then we have scalene epoxidase, give you scalene epoxide, and then cholesterol. Do you remember scalene epoxidase? Yeah, yeah, it was inhibited by a drug. It was an antifungal drug. Do you remember it? If you say terbenafin, you're absolutely correct. And I've talked about terbenafin in my premium course on antibiotics available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Citrate by ATP citrate lyase into acetyl-CoA. Then by HMG-CoA synthase, HMG-CoA. By HMG-CoA reductase mevalonic acid until we get into cholesterol. Bimpedoic acid inhibits the ACL. Statins inhibit the HMG-CoA reductase. Give me example of statins. Levostatin, atorvastatin, simvastatin, whatever. They're all freaking the same.
So here is your double cheeseburger in absorption of dietary cholesterol. Remember, citrate into acetyl-CoA ACL enzyme inhibited by pimpidoic acid. And that's why pimpidoic acid is a lipid lowering agent. Because without acetyl-CoA, there will be no HMG-CoA, and there will be no mevalonic acid, no cholesterol ester, no VLDL, and no LDL. That's why it's a lipid-lowering agent. How about statins? Statins inhibit this step. It's the HMG-CoA reductase step. And that's why statins are lipid-lowering agents. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Citrate, acetyl-CoA, HMG-CoA, mevalonic acid, and then cholesterol. Who inhibits the ATP citrate lyase, Mr. Bimpidoic acid, which is a prodrug? What actually inhibits the enzyme is ATC-1002. Who named these things? And then acetyl-CoA, HMG by HMG-CoA, inhibited by statins. And that's why statins are lipid-lowering drugs. That's why bimpidoic acid is a lipid-lowering drug. So when you give the combination of bimpidoic acid together with statin, you have actually inhibited two different steps in the cholesterol synthesis pathway. You have inhibited the ATP citrate lyase and the HMG CoA reductase, two steps in the same pathway. This is called a sequential block. Have you ever heard of sequential block before? If you say, I've heard it before with TMP as a max trimethoprim sulfamisoxazole, you're absolutely correct. Sulfonamides inhibit the dihydropterowate synthase. TMP inhibits the dihydrofolate reductase. This is sequential block of the methylene THF. Without methylene THF, there is no purine, there is no pyrimidine, so the bacteria is toast, there is no methionine, and therefore there is no Uncle Sam. You can learn more about terbinafen, TMP, SMX, all of the antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic drugs at my premium course available at medicosisperfectionist.com and it's currently on sale. Statins, baby. They inhibit HMG CoA reductase. How? By competitive inhibition. This will decrease the endogenous cholesterol synthesis in the liver. When there is no synthesis of cholesterol in the liver, as a response, the liver will upregulate all of the HDL, I'm sorry, the LDL receptors. So these are LDL receptors on the surface of the liver. The liver will increase the LDL receptor expression. Why? The liver is trying to consume all of the LDLs from the plasma, trying to use them to make more cholesterol because the endogenous de novo cholesterol synthesis is in jeopardy. And that's how we decrease the level of LDL that's in the plasma, which is awesome mission accomplished also when you inhibit the hmg coa reductase you will inhibit vldl absolutely if there is no cholesterol in the liver there is no vldl in the plasma so what are the clinical uses of statins for hyperlipidemia to reduce the recurrence or the risk of mi to decrease mortality and decrease coronary artery disease decrease strokes they also reduce the plasma level of ldl a lot VLDL triglycerides and they might raise the HDL which is the good cholesterol. Statins improve endothelial function, modulate inflammatory response, maintain the black stability in the vessel wall. Side effects of statin include increased AST, they are bad for your liver. Yeah, because they work in the liver. Imagine my shock. When should you discontinue the statins? When the AST increases by 10%? Oh, shut up. When they increase to three times the normal, the upper limit of normal example let's say that normally normally ast should be between let's say 10 and 40. what is the upper level of normal upper limit is 40. so 3x is 40 times 3 is 120. you stop the statin when the patient's ast exceeds 120. that's when you stop it oh my uh, ast increased from 40 to 45 should i say oh no shut up from 40 to 45, it's like a fart in the wind. Other side effects, myalgia, myositis, rhabdomyolysis, it's additive to niacin or gemfibrozil. Both of these are bad for your muscles. If you combine niacin with statins, 
you increase your risk of myositis. If you combine fibrates with statins, you increase your risk of muscle problems. So check the serum creatinine kinase because this is the health of the muscle. If it's high, the muscles are suffering. Also, drug-drug interaction. Statins and P450 inhibitors don't do it. Do not combine statin with grapefruit juice, for instance. Statins and red yeast rice don't do it. Why? They have something called monocholine K, which is identical to statin. It's as if you are giving double dose of statin. So you will get double side effects. Statins are the number one drug of choice for treatment of dyslipidemia. If the patient is a new patient, high lipids, we always start with statins, such as lovastatin, simvastatin, torvastatin, rusuvastatin, fluvastatin, pravastatin, and pitavastatin. Who named these things? Statins, the where, the how, the type, then what? The where, they uh, decrease the endogenous cholesterol synthesis in the liver. The how, by inhibiting HMG CoA reductase, the rate limiting step in the de novo cholesterol synthesis in the liver. The type, this is competitive inhibition. The what, then what? Liver will increase uptake of LDL by increase the expression of the LDL receptor. This will reduce the plasma LDL. And now to the statin mnemonic. It's going to be epic. Guys, I don't care about politics, but I do care about medicine, and I will use every tool available to make medicine easy for you. So, here is words of wisdom from Dr. Thomas Sowell. You can read it if you wish, but let's start from here. For example, the Tsars never censored as many people in half a century as Stalin did in just one day. So, here is the mnemonic. We will compare atorvastatin to Joseph Stalin. Atorvastatin, it inhibits the HMG-CoA reductase. Stalin inhibited his own people and reduced them to nothing. HMG-CoA, how do I remember it? H, this is Hegel, M, this is Marx, and G is Friedrich Engels. CoA is communism. How does statin work? Competitive inhibition. Stalin inhibited competition. <laughs> Statins. There is no clear superiority of one statin over the other. Atorvastatin, lovastatin, simvastatin, it doesn't matter. The clinical outcome is all the same. Stalin emphasized equality of outcome. Statins prevent cholesterol synthesis in the factory. Stalin seized control over the factories. Statins. As a result of that, the liver will upregulate the LDL receptor. Stalin increased government regulations. Atorvastatin will reduce your LDL, VLDL, and triglyceride. Stalin decreased liberty, viability, and tranquility. Statins increase your HDL and hepatotoxicity. Stalin depended on Hegel's philosophy and Henri de Saint-Simon. Statins will reduce the risk of MI and mortality, but they increase the risk of myopathy and myositis. MM. MM. I like your lectures, Medicosis, but I actually disagree on your take. Dude, that's not the point. It's just a mnemonic. Calm down. What are the drugs that can cause drug-induced hepatitis, statins, fibrates, INH, rifampin, and pyrazinamide? Here are statins in a nutshell. You eat the double cheeseburger and we are trying to absorb the fat. Ezetimibe will inhibit the dietary cholesterol absorption. And then we have citrate. Citrate will become acetyl-CoA, this is ACL enzyme, inhibited by pempidoic acid, and then HMG-CoA, by HMG-CoA reductase, mevalonate, inhibited by statins, and then cholesterol, added to triglycerides, form VLDL, inhibited by niacin, VLDL, lipoprotein lipase, and then it goes into the adipose tissue. Lipolysis, if you like to bring the fatty acids out, this is called hormone-sensitive lipase, inhibited also by freaking niacin. Niacin is a vitamin at a low dose, it's a lipid-lowering agent at a high dose. And I've talked about niacin before in this playlist called Cardiac Pharmacology on YouTube. Okay, who's gonna stimulate LPL? Fibrates. I'm trying to get rid of the VLDL. Cool! Remember the double cheeseburgers had dietary cholesterol, there were also some bile acids. Bile acids go to the liver and then they circulate back to the small intestine and back and back. And this is called the enterohepatic circulation. Who is going to inhibit that Mr. Bile Acid Sequestrant? Such as cholestyramine. Cholestyramine will trap the bile acids in the gut so they will end up in the poop. Question. Which antihyperlipidemic drug will lower LDL the most? Lower triglyceride the most? Which drug is the best at raising HDL? And here are your answers. Very important for your exam. 
Buyer beware, I mean doctor beware. Statin and niacin together, there is increased risk of myopathy. Statin and fibrase together, there is increased risk of myopathy. Bile acid resin and fibrase together, there is increased risk of cholesterol gallstones. It is really helpful to compare between all of the lipid lowering agents in just one table and it's part of my course available at medicosisperfectionanis.com. Please don't forget to subscribe and watch this playlist. If you want more cardiac pharmacology videos, go to medicosisperfectionanis.com. This course has 50 videos. Use the promo code CARDIOPHARM50 to get a 50% discount. It's available for 5 students only until the end of the month. Two days left. You can try a free sample if you wish. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. You can get my cardiac pharmacology course here. Use the promo code CARDIOPHARM50 to get a 50% discount. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.